Some people call Canucks fans bipolar. And by this they mean the fact that the Canucks fans can sometimes be completely behind the team and other times want to completely blow up the team. Now, there are other fan bases that do this, of course, it's sports, it happens, but the Canucks fan base is kind of particular for being of this status, and it's for a good reason. I'm gonna say it right here, Canucks fans, we're passionate, and we love this team. We want this team to succeed no matter what, so when the team doesn't succeed, that's a sign to us that, okay, things are not right, we need to change. And that's where all this quote-unquote bipolarness, this is where the fickle attitude of the Canucks fans come from. And it's exemplified here, because the Canucks just beat the Kings 3-2 to two in what is arguably one of the most entertaining games to have watched other than the Besser Hattrick game. The Canucks, they just handed LA their third loss in a row. Wow, okay, so talking about this game is a bit tricky. Because there were moments where the Canucks and the Kings definitely were not on the same page. The Kings were a step above, and Canucks were definitely not as good as they could have been. And there were other times where the Canucks, you watch them and you go, this is the same Canucks team that didn't score a goal in a hundred-something minutes. And they get three here tonight. Um, they weren't anything super special, but they were fairly special. And the game as a whole was... A fickle game, if you were a Canucks fan watching this, you were on the brink of your seat during the ending moments after the first period, where the first period everyone was like, oh my god, I don't want to watch this anymore. And I say that because the Kings got off to a really hot start. Anders Nielsen was not in position for the first goal. Um, it was a lucky one, in my opinion, because if Nielsen is faced with that shot ten times, he saves that shot nine out of ten times. His positioning was god-awful in that play. He was facing the middle, he wasn't facing the shooter. Left his pad very prone to giving up a rebound, which is why that goal went in. The second goal, it was a really bad defensive play. Um, the Canucks, in the defensive zone, they weren't covering their checks correctly. Hutton did a good job trying to come over to block the guy. And Erica Branson, whose check at the time was the goal scorer did not do a good job in following the goal scorer towards the net, as, what's his name, Anze Kopitar. Anze Kopitar walks right in, and he's able to get a free lane to shoot it in, as Eric Branson does not take the man in the middle. Hutton was already um, blocking off the passing lane or whatever, so he couldn't have done it. Good Branson is just standing there, doesn't really do anything. Can't really do anything about that because, oh well, the Canucks were jumbled up in their defensive zone. Other than that, though, this game was a good game, and I'm gonna say it right now, I really enjoyed watching them today. They played some entertaining hockey and some successful hockey today. There was a fire under the team in this game, and you could see it in all of the players. Brock Besser, Bo Horvat, and Berchi, they were on their game tonight. The Sedins, oh my goodness, the Sedins were good. And I thoroughly enjoyed watching them play. When we got on the power play and the Sedins were on the ice, this was the first time in ages where I was like, okay, I want to see what magic the Sedins are going to do with the puck this time. And their power play. The power play was good. Our power play was overall like two for three. That was good. And the chances we got, we were controlling the play. And we were making passes, and we were setting up, we were playing the game how we wanted to play it. We weren't falling into what the Kings wanted to do. We let ourselves control the game, wait for the Kings to bite, move around the Kings, pass it back to the other open guy, take a good shot, there's a puck open on the rebound, Bo Horvat scores. Henrik Sedin in this game, I was very impressed with Henrik Sedin. His first goal of the game, wow. Wow, just, I'm gonna say it was lucky. I'm gonna say it was lucky. It was a really good, pure elite sniper goal off of the backside of one of the King's young guys. I think it was Kempi or Shore or something like that. I, I forgot. But it was, I'm gonna say it, it was a lucky goal. It was a goal that was well-deserved though because Henrik Sedin had a lot of patience on that play and he was just trying to get it out to his open man. And it, went, it goes in. That, that's a good goal. It happens. 
Second goal of the game. I was really happy with this one. It was the, uh, the tip-in. The Brock Besser shot, which gets deflected up into the shoulder, up and over, and then it lands on the ice. Bo Horvath makes a smart play to wait until the puck touches the ice before he tries to hit it in. Good goal. Henrik Sedin again with a laser of a pass to get through three sticks to find Brock Besser. And Sven Berchi on the final goal, the game-winning goal of this Canucks game. Wow, that was good too. Berchi just absolutely rips it off of a really good feed from Thomas Vanek. We haven't seen that much of Vanek over the past few years, but a lot of Vanek's playmaking ability and his puck skills are really showing with the Canucks. I think a lot of the Canucks fans kind of underestimated him when we got Vanek as a free agent signing. And it's paying off. We're looking at the goals that are being scored by our players. Vanek is doing a good job at assisting and goal scoring. This game was also featuring two Canucks players who got two points. Henrik got a goal and an assist. Derek Pouliot got two assists. He assisted on the first Henrik goal and the Berchi goal. So Pouliot, hands down, the best defenseman on the team at the moment. That Pouliot and Edler pairing blows my mind. They were so good, so consistent, so fast. I loved watching these guys on the ice. Edler looked like 2011 Edler, winding up, the slap passes, the slap shots. Edler looked motivated tonight. That was cool. Pouliot was better than ever. Pouliot has been good for a while now. He's been like the best defenseman on the Canucks since Tanev has been out. And Derek Pouliot definitely, definitely needs to stay on this team once Tanev comes back. Erickson, he played, honestly, I'm going to say he was pretty good too. I liked the way he was playing. There are a few um, mishaps that I believe he had where he is, his positioning wasn't really the best. But overall, I believe Erickson really meshes with the Sedins. And this is the kind of chemistry we were looking for when we signed Erickson, what, two summers ago or something like that. Other than that, I want to talk about uh, two more things. First off, Brandon Sutter, he's like a puck magnet. The puck always finds his way onto his stick. Whether that's him forechecking, backchecking, the puck always, for some reason, ends up on the stick of Brandon Sutter. And it ends up on the stick of Brandon Sutter frequently. And he had some good opportunities here. He had a penalty shot, which he lost the puck a little bit, and Quick had some good positioning to block that five hole. So that's fair game for that one. I thought that was okay. But Brandon Sutter, he's really showing that he he does the right things sometimes. I'm not going to sit here and say Brandon Sutter is really good because I don't believe he's really good. I believe he's actually kind of not good. But you can't ignore the fact. Brandon Sutter always ends up with the puck. And if he always ends up with the puck, then that means he's doing something right. So I guess that's pretty good. The last thing I wanted to talk about before I talk about Anders Nielsen is the power play. Because the power play was good. And... The power play unit that scored the Bow goal, it was a unit of Bo, Besser, Henrik, Daniel, and Edler. And I was watching this going, whoa, this is a ballsy move. Having, like, the five guys who are the power play guys all playing together. This is a stacked power play, and we got a stacked power play. I would like to see Bo, Besser, Henrik, Daniel, and Edler again soon, but I don't think it should be used that often because that's just exhausting all of our power play um, weapons, our good power play weapons, onto one power play unit, which they got a goal, so that's good. And I also want to talk about Anders Nielsen, because Anders Nielsen, he was beautiful in this game. First two goals, eh. Second goal, eh. I mean, the first goal, it was his fault. His positioning wasn't good. His second goal, it was the fault of his defensemen. And the rest of the game, absolute showstopper. I loved it. And overall, I love this game. For the most part. Not all the parts of this game I loved, but the majority of the game I thought it was a really good game. And I think Canucks fans will be satisfied with this one, because... They showed some effort. There was a fire under this team tonight. And we just handed the Kings, who are what? The third, second, maybe first best team in our division? Their third loss in a row. That's awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed. It's been a pleasure for watching. Thanks 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 for watching. Thanks